Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to this session. The objective of this session is to continue our discussion on the market for money and then subsequently discuss the factors that affect the fluctuations in rate of interest. The last session uh, while discussing the market for money, uh, we discuss transaction and precautionary demand for money and there using the demand and supply of money we saw that how rate of interest are determined in the money markets. So at that time uh, we left little bit to discuss another aspect of demand for money that is speculative demand for money. So in the first part of this session we will complete the, this part of this discussion that is the speculative demand for money. Uh, the idea of the concept of speculative demand for money was introduced by John Maynard Keynes. So his definition he defined uh, speculative demand for money is the money held in anticipation of a fall in uh, bond prices. This is what uh, Keynesian speculative demand for money. And Keynes uh, in some of his, in his writings we can see that the speculative motive he introduced the motive concept called speculative motive that is the object of securing profit from knowing better than the market what the future will bring forth from the existence of uncertainty as to the future of rate of interest. So according to Keynes the individual who believes that future rates of interest will be above the rates assumed by the market has a reason for keeping liquid cash that means demanding cash demanding money whilst the individual who differs from the market in other direction will have a motive for borrowing money for short periods in order to purchase debt of long term. So about as we already seen in the previous session in our model that uh, there are two assets only two assets one is money and other one is bonds. So about the relative desirability of both money and bonds about return on money we know that money does not pay any rate of interest so that means zero and about bond, bond actually pay interest earnings bonds pay interest earnings and in addition uh, there is capital gain either capital gain or capital loss. So capital gain happens you know that when the rate of interest declines later on in the future and then actually then the bond price will increase so as a result there will be capital gain in addition to the interest earnings. So in contrast uh, if the rate of interest increase in the future and there is going to be a decline in the bond price and as a result there is going to be capital loss. So about the bond we know that there is interest earnings and the interest itself interest rate is also uncertain and plus there is about the return expected return it includes uh, interest earnings and the either capital loss or capital gain and this actually is subject to fluctuation in rate of interest. So an individual would make a choice between holding money which does not pay interest and bonds the choice between money and bonds uh, you know that bonds which provide uh, provides an uncertain return on the basis of maximizing return to his portfolio. And the question here is since bonds pay interest money does not then why an individual would hold any money above that is needed for the transaction and precautionary motives. So prior to uh, the concept of speculative motive was introduced 
uh, there was mainly two motives were discussed uh, uh, that is the fact is the motive behind demanding money that is uh, transaction and precautionary motive. Then the question is uh, then why an individual would hold any money above that is needed for transaction and precautionary motive. And the answer given by Keynes was that because of uncertainty about the future interest rates that is one and second one the relationship between changes in interest rate and the price of bonds we know that uh, there is an inverse relationship so because of the uncertainty about the future interest rates and the inverse relationship between uh, interest rate and price of bonds uh, lead to that would uh, lead to uh, the demand for that actually one of the major cause for speculative demand for money that is demanding money above that is above that is needed for the transaction and precautionary motive. How Keynes introduced this idea you see uh, according to Keynes investors have a relatively fixed conception of the normal interest rate in an economy. So suppose whether the interest rate is 5 interest rate in an economy is 5 whether it is normal interest rate or above the normal rate or below the rate actually people have a fixed conception about the normal interest rate based on the previous data the historical data. So when the actual interest rate is above the normal rate uh, you see when the actual interest rate is above the normal interest rate investors expect that interest rate would fall in the future. In contrast, when the interest rate is below the normal rate, investors expect the interest rate to rise in the future. So this is the two trend that we can see here. Given this assumption about how expectations about interest rates are formed, we can develop a relationship between the level of the speculative demand for money and the interest rate. According to Keynes, the, he actually uh, gave, uh, 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 um, built his speculative demand for money mainly on the notion of uh, expectation on interest rate. And there will be bulls in the market, in the bond market, bulls means who want to buy and hold bonds. So since individuals tend to differ in their views on the future rate of interest, some would expect an increase in bond price that means decrease in the rate of interest and obviously you know that when someone expecting that the there is an increase in bond price that means decrease in rate of interest obviously they will be willing to choosing willing to buy more bonds and they can be labeled as bulls in the bond market that means they expect that uh, bond price is going to increase that means rate of interest is going to decrease which translated into increase in bond price uh, which would give them capital gain that means they can make more profit more return from uh, this movement so they are called bulls and what about how about a bears bears actually who want to sell bonds and hold money so what bull bears think then while others would expect a decrease in bond prices that is increase in rate of interest. So when they expect that there is an increase the, the rate of interest is going to increase in the future that means bond price is going to decrease and they expect there is going to be a capital loss if they buy if they keep uh, her bonds and they are called as lab, labeled as bears choosing to reduce their bond holdings and instead they will be holding more money. Any increase in bond price will exceed the expectation of some bulls that is convince them that bond price have gone up too far and convert them into fears. But they think that the rate of interest has declined beyond a level that means decline, decline further and further gone up too far that means in translating this into that in the bond price has already gone up too far and they think that the rate of interest is going to increase because the normal rate of interest is for example 5 percentage but when they see that rate of interest has declined to 4 percentage, 3 percentage, 2 percentage and when they think that rate of interest has declined to the bottom really at the bottom and when they think that so because of that you know that bond price has gone up too far uh, then as a result what they think that 
uh, the rate of industry is going to increase in the future and because of that some bulls uh, they will become uh, bears expecting that bond price is going to decline in the future. A preponderance of bulls in the bond market that is higher demand for bonds pushes up the prices of the bonds and pushes down the rate of interest. Uh, this movement converts an increasing number of bulls who want to buy and hold bonds into bears until an equilibrium price of bond is reached where the demand for bonds just equals their supply. So therefore, the demand for speculative dim money balances by bears increases as the prices of bonds rise or conversely as the interest rate falls so that aggregate speculative demand for money is inversely related to the rate of interest. So this point mainly here due to the changes in future rate of interest which can lead to capital loss or capital gain that means expected future rate of interest this also leads to change that the building up of expected uh, capital loss and gain. Keynes assumed that different individuals had different views of what was a normal rate of interest because he is talking about macroeconomy there are different people with different views of uh, when it comes to normal interest rate. So as I mentioned just before actually the perception about normal rate of interest it was based upon each and every individual's perception of what is normal. Maybe they may build this one based on the adaptive expectation based on the historical data that means okay the, for the last one year this is the rate of interest for this economy and this is normal and the current rate of interest may be normal or above the normal or below the normal this is just a perception. So as the interest rate fell beginning for example at a very high rate where there, were, there was very little speculative demand the rate would move successively below the critical rates of different investors. So the lower the interest rate the more investors would find that uh, given their view of the normal interest rate uh, money was the preferred asset. At a very low interest rate that is a key point here at a very low interest rate almost all investors would come to expect almost all investors most of the investors would come to expect the interest rate to rise substantially in the future because already at the current rate of interest is, is much much below the normal rate of interest and they expect that future, future rate of interest is going to rise substantially and money would be almost universally preferred as an asset because when they see that uh, future rate of interest is going to increase uh, that means they think that bond price is going to decline and they would incur a capital loss. This can be explained using a diagram so where we can we are making the assumption that in this economy there are only two assets one is the total wealth total wealth the total wealth is distributed between demand for money and bonds money and bonds these are the two assets so where we see that MY is the individual's total money holdings and BI is bond holdings where WHI is uh, wealth. Again we categorize group total money holdings into transactions transaction means transaction and precautionary we can add so or, or no, normally we bring put both the transaction and precautionary motive the precautionary demand for money as one just uh, transaction demand for money in the transaction there actually what transaction is actually more certain precautionary is little bit uncertain so that is the main difference otherwise we just put both of the mass transaction demand for money and M MI raised to raise to 2 is called the speculative demand for money so we categorize group the total demand for money into transaction and speculative demand for money and now let us use first start with an individual's speculative demand for money so in this diagram the first part in panel 1 we denote rate of interest on the y axis and the speculative demand for money on the x axis. So what you can see here that assume this one r i raised to n this one uh, is called the normal interest rate 
and this is only a perception we are just taking case of an individual a hypothetical uh, an individual then uh, his perception is that the normal interest rate is this much maybe we can give one numerical value for example if you want 5 percentage let us now see what would happen when the rate of interest declines so this is the initial normal rate of interest as per this individual's perception and then the suppose then rate of interest become uh, keep on declining so see for example 4.5 uh, then become 4 percentage um, then again it will decline further we will denote it soon let us see that what would happen if the rate of interest become 4.5 and you know that when the rate of interest become 4.5 uh, normally a kind of perception started building that means rate of interest is below the normal rate of interest maybe in the future in the future it can bounce back it can increase the moment we see that rate of interest is going to increase in the future the investors fears that when the rate of interest increase their bond price will decline and they will incur a capital loss but here you know that bond uh, bond also give a return that the coupon that the interest income it will be already the income they will be giving the agreed income they will be giving uh, the coupon income they will be giving so from the the return from bond you know that two components are there one is from in the form of uh, yield to maturity that one is the interest income and second one is either capital gain or capital loss so from this point that for example rate of interest is 5 percentage when we see that rate of interest has become 4.5 and uh, this individual anticipate that rate of interest will bounce back to uh, 5 percentage then he is going to make some capital loss but then uh, he may not he still continue to demand bond because there is return from the coupon from the bond suppose here that this uh, rate of interest decline further to here that means 4 percent day suppose this a uh, perpetual bond the return the interest income is for example 50 dollar per 1000 bond suppose you see that when the rate of interest become this much uh, suppose and if the rate of interest fall from 5 percent day to 4 percent day and you know that when they see that the rate of interest is going to bounce back to 5 then obviously they are going to make a capital loss suppose the capital loss is 50 and from, from this calculate that this 50 then they will be indifferent because you see they are going to make a capital loss of 50 but anyway they are going to get 50 uh, as a coupon coupon income uh, from this holding this bond so and because of that they will be a little bit um, uh, pessimistic about the scenario but they will still st uh, hold the, the demand for uh, bond will continue because they anticipate that anyway they may make a capital loss of this much that 50 but it will be compensated with 50 of coupon payment but then we say that this rate this 4 percentage let us call this one as the critical rate we uh, denote it with the critical rate and below this what if the rate of interest become 3.5 percentage and you know that 3.5 percentage when it bounces back to again 5 obviously the capital loss won't be 50 it will be for example let us make it uh, 75 is the capital loss so in this case you know that the this bond is going to give only the return the coupon of only 50 then you can see that the expected losses the expected capital losses because the rate of interest is below this critical rate below this critical rate they see that these expected losses would outweigh the interest earning on the bonds and then this would cause the investors to hold more money hold more money instead you know why because uh, below the critic when the rate of interest go goes below the critical rate of interest if they demand money we demand bond the, then the expected capital loss would outweigh the interest earning and they will make a loss right suppose it is 1000 bond if they make a capital loss of 75 and but the interest income will be coupon payment only will be 50 that means they are going to make the net capital loss of 25 right so because of that what they will do that when the rate of interest go below the critical minimum uh, critical rate of interest uh, they would they would prefer to hold more money instead of bond and this money demand is going is called as speculative demand for money 
right. So, you can see that until this one that uh, this point from uh, uh, rate of interest movement from normal interest rate to critical rate of interest, you can see that the total de speculative demand for money, uh, speculative demand for money uh, is going to be uh, 0 when the rate of interest is uh, normal or till it uh, goes down till the critical rate uh, speculative demand for money is going to be zero. So, there you can see that the total wealth minus uh, transaction demand for money this is going to be full of bonds only bonds that the wealth minus transaction demand for money this distance uh, is going to be uh, full of bond holding. That means, the total asset total wealth what is left after transaction demand all will be in the portfolio allocation is going to be bond when the rate of interest is above the normal rate of interest or below the normal rate of interest, but till uh, the critical rate of interest. But the moment when the rate of interest fall below the critical rate this point then instead of bond because people anticipate that they are going to make capital loss they are going to demand money and this money demand that means WH minus uh, this WH uh, minus uh, transaction demand for money this one uh, is going to be a speculative demand for money which we can den which we can denote as MY2. So, this demand for money here is going to be speculative demand for money uh, according to Keynes analysis. Uh, this one when we translate it into aggregate macroeconomic level what you can see that when the rate of interest for example, this is below the critical rate uh, for the economy for uh, most of the people uh, when this point is below that critical rate uh, then you can see that any declining rate of interest when the rate of interest keep on declining uh, people think that money is the most preferred asset. So, where you can see that the aggregate speculative demand for money schedule uh, as the interest rates becomes lower and lower it falls below the critical rate for more individuals and the speculative demand for money rises. This is the concept of speculative demand for money in a macroeconomic context uh, at an aggregate level. So, what is the point here is that uh, to summarize this one uh, what we can see here is that suppose that an investor believes interest rates will fall. Uh, then bonds then how the higher aspect return and thus would demand bonds uh, no speculative demand for money only transaction money demand when uh, investor believe that interest rate will fall in the future. So, obviously, he is make capital loss here no speculative demand for money in this case, but in contrast this scenario if the interest rates are expected to rise then it is possible that expected capital loss on bonds will outweigh interest earning and then expected return on bonds would be negative in such a case and money would be the preferred asset. So, to study the main definition to summarize this one money held in anticipation of a fall in bond prices that means a rise in rate of interest is Keynesian's Keynes speculative demand for money. And this concept was introduced by Keynes uh, in the context of depression great depression when the economy is undergoing a recessionary stage or a depressionary stage uh, then normally the demand for the rate of interest go below the normal rate because overall the economic activity is very low that means uh, economy is undergoing through a recessionary phase and as a result the supply of bonds will be very less and people demand for bonds also will be relatively less. So, as a result overall during recess recessionary time uh, the rate of interest will be very low. So, at that time what is going to happen that uh, Keynes said that uh, Keynes argument was that when the rate of interest is very low which is much much below the normal rate and also below the critical rate people always anticipate people will be anticipating that the rate of interest will increase in the future and they will make a capital loss. Then at that time suppose um, monetary policy the central bank of a country for example when they try to when they inject more money in the economy 
uh, with the anticipation that with the expectation that uh, the rate of interest can be reduced so that investment can be rejuvenated. But what is going to happen here is that uh, a kind of liquidity trap will happen that means even when the central bank or the monetary authority inject more money in the economy uh, it will not be invested in the bond market it will be just held as cash just held as money that means just in the uh, held as liquidity liquid asset that is money then at that time the monetary policy is going to be very ineffective. So, here is uh, create a trap liquidity trap that means a situation at a very low interest rate where the speculative demand for money, sch money schedule becomes nearly horizontal. So, what we can see here is that look at this this is the money demand suppose that there is speculative demand for money then what happened that after certain point of time when the rate of interest become really really low suppose R naught at this point uh, very low and after that the perception is so strong among the general public among the investors that the rate of interest is really really low it can bounce back to it will increase at any time. So, at that time suppose the money initial money supply suppose this one is uh, MS not this is the initial money supply suppose then what is going to happen if even if they increase money supply money supply is not going to reduce rate of interest because the additional money supply coming to the economy that the money supply money injected in the economy will be just held in the form of uh, money by the people just they keep it as just in the form of money it will not be invested in the bond market. We know that what we have studied in the previous session that means in the normal scenario if there is an increase in money supply keeping the demand for money same constant if there is an increase in uh, money supply we have seen that people will be content with more money supply more money then they will be demanding more bonds then the bond price will increase and then the rate of interest will decline that means when the rate of interest decline in the economy uh, the investment will there will be more investment in factories and machines that means more productive production investment in production. So, that will rejuvenate the economy that will increase the economic activity then the GDP will start increasing right that is the whole idea. But when the economy is in a liquidity trap during recession uh, Keynes argument is that even if we increase money suppose we increase from here from here to MS1 to MS0 then rate of interest will be still at the critical the, the very low that they are not and even if we increase further also it is not going to make any impact even if we reduce the money supply even from MS2 to MS0 then also is not going to increase the rate of interest as well right. That means this point uh, this area that means the demand curve the speculative demand the money demand the entire money demand uh, you can see that it is going to be uh, horizontal that means perfectly interest elastic a horizontal line that means any increase in money supply is not going to make any changes in the interest rate here. That means any additional money supply it will be fully absorbed by the households as money liquid asset that is money as money asset it will not be invested in any bonds. In the next session uh, this session we completed uh, our discussion uh, discussion on the demand for money mostly our discussion was here was confined to the speculative demand for money. Uh, where, where we related it with the bond market and the rate of interest. And in the next session uh, we will discuss um, the changes, the differences uh, in interest rate for different uh, debt instrument and subsequently we will also discuss what are the factors that explain these differences, the factors explaining, uh, determining the differences and fluctuations in the rate of interest. Thank you.